In this video, we're going to be showing you why and how to change your heavy duty CAT diesel engine fuel transfer pump. Now on any of your heavy duty CAT diesel engines, that would be your C10, 11, 12s, 13s, 3406Es, and C15s, your fuel transfer pump is this small pump on your front structure here on the driver's side. Now this truck came in, it was hard starting and low power in general. So we found that the fuel pressure while idling and at rated RPM was fairly low. It was in the mid 60s, and you can see it's really hard starting here. So just taking forever to start. Now you'll see, even though it's idling now, it's sitting a little bit over 80 PSI, and you're thinking, well, didn't you just say it was only running about 65? Well, there's a reason that it's higher than it was before, and the reason is, is I have the return line capped off. So this is with the fuel transfer pump at full pressure. Now you wanna make sure you have a good fuel supply, so what we did is we ran a clear hose here, and you can see no bubbles, so that's good and about 82 psi and you can see i've capped the fuel return line so this will make the fuel transfer pump put out max pressure and it should be a little higher yeah you typically want to see it about 100 on these c15s at idle with it capped now i had already installed a new fuel pressure regulator in the filter base because that's usually the first thing you want to change or check when looking for low fuel pressure codes here now the fuel transfer pump on any of your cat heavy duties is ran off the gear train on the front here and you can see it and it's just two lines and two bolts but they can be a real pain now this is the supply side it's a smaller one 11 16 is the fitting and then the 7 8 is the bigger one which is the suction side of the pump now i had to use crow's feet to get these loose these were on pretty tight uh you can get a wrench in there a lot of the times if you're you know you got like three elbows on one arm but crow's feet are usually the best way to break them loose so once we're loosening it up here and once we get our lines off then we're going to take our bolts off now these are 12 point bolts on the c15 they're going to be 3 8 12 point and cat doesn't use a lot of 12 point bolts they use them on their cam gear here obviously head bolts and maybe one or two other places but you're going to need, usually wrenches are 12 point on the one end, but you know your normal 6 point socket not going to work here. So once you get your bolts out, the pump comes right out. Now the pump is a spline drive because it's ran off the gear train, but it's not time. You don't have to worry about timing it or pinning the engine or anything like that. And it's sealed with a single o-ring. So here's the pump on the vise. Now... There's a pressure regulator in here with a spring, and that's, there's actually an update for that spring. And if your pump's still good and you just want to change the spring, you can do that. The spring kit is a little expensive. I think it was around $80, and the pump itself was about $180. So this is our pump disassembled. You can see it's basically just a twin gear style pump with the regulator. Not much to it. So... Once you get your fittings off, you're going to reseal them. You can see new O-rings on them and a new O-ring on our new pump. And also, the pump is directional, so we have a direction arrow facing the way the fuel goes. But the fittings are different, so you can't really mess it up. So here we have our pump, the new one installed. The bolts torque to 26 foot-pounds, according to CAT. And, of course, I've painted it. You always want to paint your parts, or else they look like crap, because they'll rust out. Now we're going to test our engine here, and you can see it starts up right away, so that's a good sign, whereas the old one would take forever to crank. And you're going to let it run for a little bit before you really test the pressure. So let it run for a couple seconds so that all the air is out of the lines. And then you're going to look at your pressure. Now, you can't really see the pressure gauge as well as before when I zoomed up on it, but... It's putting out about 95 to 100 at idle, and then it's getting up to about 115 when you rev it up to about 1500 RPM. And since it started right away, this took care of the customer's performance complaint problem. Now it's time for a little segment I like to call...
So on the very same engine we were doing the fuel transfer pump on, the customer said, hey, uh, radiator is, you know, can you clean it out? It seems to be not cooling as well. And there were some leaks at the cores where it goes into the end housings on, or the tanks on the radiator. And radiators tend to deteriorate. Now you can see the fins here. I'm gonna lightly brush my finger across these fins here and they will just fall apart. Look at it, it's like they're made out of dirt. If your radiator gets like that, if you wash it out, you're just gonna wipe out the fins. You really, really need a new radiator and not cheap, all right? So that's the destruction of the week. Thanks for watching the video.